When you think of data inside a table, you typically think of one value, one string inside of a field. But when it comes to option sets and choices, how do you show multiple values or multiple strings that have been selected? How do you save that as well? In this episode of Friday Functions, I'll be showing you how you can use SharePoint choice columns and SharePoint person columns, uh, single selection and multiple selection inside a combo box. Before we dive into how a combo box works inside Power Apps, let's take a moment to understand some of the terminology that I'm using in this video. Um, this will help you understand working with data a little bit better. In a previous video of mine, I explained different levels of data. The two that we're going to be going deeply into in this video are the table and the record. Let's take a look at a table. I always start with my understanding from Excel. In Excel, I think of a table as different rows and columns. We'll call this column A, B, C, and D. An individual row is what we call a record inside Power Apps. It's the exact same thing. It's going to be just one of these, and it's going to contain data from column A, B, C, and D. Now, I could have multiple records inside of a table. So I might have another record. A, B, C, and D. If I choose any part of that table, maybe I only want these two records, that data would still be at the level of a table. Even though this entire thing is a table, any subsection of it is still uh, working as a table. Now let's transfer that knowledge of tables and records into combo boxes. Inside Power Apps, a combo box is basically a drop-down menu. And that drop-down menu allows you to search, which makes it a, a much better uh, drop-down menu. So from that, it's going to have an items property. The items property is data at the level of a table. The combo box also has a property for its selected item. This is an individual selected item. It's at the level of a record. Think of one selection, think of one record. Combo boxes can also select multiple records as a default selected items property, which is at the table level, because you're, what, what you're telling uh, the combo box is what it should have pre-filled uh, at the very beginning. But it also has a selected items property, which is also a table worth of data. Here I've pulled up a SharePoint list where I have two different kinds of choice columns and two different kinds of person columns. Uh, the first choice column is a single select choice column. I have choices choice one, choice two, choice three. The second choice column that I have, I allow multiple selections to be made. The person columns have been set up the same way. A person column that has only a single selection and a person column that has a multiple selection. From this, I created an app. You could do a lot of learning about Power Apps by looking at a sample template, adding one of the screen templates, or just creating an app from data. Let's take a look at the items property that I was talking about earlier and see how it's set up for different types of columns. For a single selection choice column, the items property for it is going to be pointing to 
the choices function. Choices returns the different, a table worth of all the different things that are allowed uh, for a particular column. Here I have choices one, two, and three. For a multiple selection choice column, it also uses the choices function to return a table worth of data. The person column is also going to be using the choices function to return the different people available for selection. And the multiple selection person column is also going to be using the choices function. So the item property, items property is going to be consistent for those four different types of columns. Now let's take a look at what data is saved for the, these different types of columns. If I have a single selection uh, choice column, the update property is going to save a record worth of data, a single record. So I point it to the combo box dot selected, which is a single record. But for a multiple choice choice column, I point it to the selected items property of that combo box because I want to save a table worth of data. You might guess a single selection point person column is going to be using the selected uh, property of a combo box, and the multiple person multiple multiple selection person column is going to be pointing to selected items. Just to review, I'm going to save a record worth of data for a single select choice, a table worth of data for multiple selection choice column. I'm going to save a record, a single record for a single selection person column, and I'm going to save a table worth of data for a multiple selection person column. Let's take a moment and visualize what's actually going on here with the SharePoint list. The list itself is a table. As a table, it has rows of data and it has columns. I have four different kinds of columns here, the single selection choice column and the multiple selection choice column. I'll just call it choice X, uh, a single selection person column, and multiple selection person column. For that single selection choice column, I'm going to zoom in here. I have a combo box. That combo box has an items property. Those items are a table of data. It has a column name, choice one, choice two, and choice three. Now, for that single selection choice column, what I'm going to be saving is a single record. The multiple selection choice column is going to be set up very similarly. I have a combo box of those items. But instead of just selecting one record, I have a table worth of data. So right off the bat, I know that I'm expecting a record worth of data for the single selection choice, a table worth of data for multiple selection choice, a record worth of data, for the person single selection person column and a table worth of data. If I wanted to tell this combo box what to have selected by default, I go to its default selected items property. And it turns out for these four different configurations of columns, they're going to be pointing to the exact same thing, parent.default. What does it actually mean though? Well, parent just means what is the container? The thing that is containing this combo box is this data card. And this data card has a default property. And if I take a look at the default property for these four different configurations, it's all set up the same way. This item dot and then the column name, which is nothing out of the ordinary if you've ever worked with forms and galleries before. This just means what has been saved to that field, to that column. So even though 
these different columns are pointing to the different types of data, record, table, record, table. The default selected items is going to pull in a record when it needs a record. It's going to pull in a table worth of data when it needs a table worth of data. It's going to pull in a record when it needs a record, a table when it needs a table. So the configuration for this doesn't need to be split up in any, you don't need to use a split function. Um, it's not as complicated as you might have been expecting. Uh, so all the work is really done for you just by referencing what's in that column. So this is just an overview of how to use combo boxes and the different properties for it uh, for different configurations of columns, whether you have a single selection or multiple selection. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting Power Apps, please subscribe.